Welcome back to this week's edition of the Risk Spotlight Operational Risk News Update. My name is Emily Jones, and today I'll be bringing you essential updates and insights from the world of operational risk drawn from the past week. All information shared here is sourced from the Risk Spotlight portal, the premier forward-looking service dedicated to operational risk content. Let's get started. The first update is about cyber-enabled fraud cases in East and Southeast Asia. The fraud cases caused up to $37 billion in losses for victims in these regions in 2023, according to a United Nations report. Organized crime groups in the region have rapidly adopted new technologies like malware, generative AI, and deepfakes to enhance their operations. The cybercrime as a service economy has significantly lowered entry barriers for various cybercrimes. Criminal groups are leveraging AI technologies, particularly generative AI tools, for identity theft, fraud, and other malicious activities. There was a 600% increase in deepfake-related content targeting criminal groups in Southeast Asia in the first half of 2024. Telegram has emerged as a primary platform for accessing cybercrime tools and services, including info stealers and underground clouds of logs providers, UCLs. The UN warns that governments are struggling to contain these rapidly evolving criminal activities in the region. The next update is about cybercriminals capitalizing on poorly configured cloud environments. The cybercriminals are exploiting vulnerabilities in cloud environments and leveraging off-the-shelf offensive security tools. Cobalt Strike accounted for 27.02% of observed malware infections, while offensive security tools made up 54% of malware alerts. Cloud misconfigurations are prevalent, with 47% of Microsoft Azure failures linked to storage account issues, 44% of Google Cloud users failing encryption checks, and 30% of AWS failures related to S3 checks. Credential access comprised 23% of cloud behaviors, primarily in Azure, with a 12% increase in brute force techniques. The malware as a service model is gaining popularity, lowering the barrier to entry for cyber criminals. While security efforts are making progress, evidenced by a 6% decrease in defense evasion behaviors, mature threat actors are adapting by exploiting device drivers, injecting into privileged processes, and unloading security components. Organizations are advised to strengthen their security measures, including enforcing MFA and minimizing attack surfaces. The next update is about the European Union facing calls to harmonize cyber incident reporting requirements as new legislation approaches. The Federation of European Risk Management Associations, FIRMA, emphasizes the need for streamlined and consistent reporting processes. Upcoming EU cybersecurity laws, including NIS2, DORA, and CRA, along with existing GDPR regulations, impose various reporting timelines and practices on organizations. For instance, NIS2 requires reporting within 24 hours of detection, with follow-ups at 72 hours and one month. DORA mandates reporting of major incidents, while CRA introduces a phased reporting system. GDPR necessitates notification within 24 hours of a data breach. FIRMA warns that complying with these diverse requirements will impose significant costs on businesses and urges the European Commission to consider insurance implications in future cyber legislation. The next update is about a new audit framework released by ICO. The UK's Information Commissioner's Office, ICO, has released this framework to assist businesses in complying with data protection regulations. This framework expands on the existing accountability framework and offers nine toolkits covering areas likely to be examined during a data protection audit. These toolkits include audit control measures, ICO expectations, a downloadable data protection audit tracker, and additional good practice examples. The framework is primarily aimed at large organizations in the public, private, and third sectors, and is designed for use by individuals familiar with data protection law, such as senior management and data protection officers. While the ICO emphasizes that the framework is a useful starting point, it does not guarantee full legal compliance. The next update is about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, issuing guidance on September 17, 2024, regarding overdraft services. It emphasized that banks and credit unions must obtain affirmative consent before enrolling customers in overdraft services for ATM and one-time debit card transactions. This guidance, 
outlined in Consumer Financial Protection Circular 2024 Joe 5, is based on the Electronic Fund Transfer Act, FTA, and Regulation E. The CFPB's supervisory examinations have revealed numerous instances where financial institutions could not provide proof of consumer consent before charging overdraft fees. Even institutions with Regulation E compliance policies in place often failed to demonstrate that these policies were being followed. While Regulation E does not specify a particular form of record for consent, the CFPB provided examples of sufficient records for various channels to help institutions comply with these requirements. The next update is about pay transparency laws in the United States. The laws are becoming increasingly prevalent in the United States requiring employers to disclose compensation information for job positions. These laws vary by state and sometimes municipality, creating challenges for employers hiring remote workers across state lines. A U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics study found that one in five workers telework, with polls indicating up to 90% of the workforce preferring remote work options. This trend, coupled with hiring difficulties in smaller labor markets, has led employers to seek candidates beyond their local areas. States like New Jersey and Illinois are implementing new pay transparency requirements, with Illinois' law taking effect on January 1, 2025, for employers with 15 or more employees. To navigate this complex landscape, HR professionals are advised to comply with the most stringent regulations applicable to their workforce, as remote hiring and pay transparency are likely to remain significant trends in the future. Now let me provide a quick update on key operational risk loss events that were reported in the media last week. The first update is about the Toronto Dominion Bank. TD Bank faces U.S. growth restrictions and a $3 billion penalty for anti-money laundering failings. The penalties will be paid to U.S. banking regulators, the Justice Department, and FinCEN, with the Justice Department receiving $1.8 billion and FinCEN $1.3 billion. TD has already set aside over $3 billion to cover potential fines, but the growth restrictions surprised analysts and investors. The settlement is expected to be formally announced soon, and TD shares have fallen in response to the news. The next update is about AA Insurance in New Zealand getting a hefty fine. The High Court has ordered AA Insurance to pay a $6.2 million penalty for overcharging more than 100,000 customers by a total of $11.1 million. This happened because they failed to apply multi-policy and membership discounts, as well as guaranteed no-claims bonuses, and even misled customers about their offers in marketing materials. The case, which affected policies between 2015 and 2020, has led to AA Insurance apologizing and refunding over $15.6 million to past and present customers, including interest. The next update is about a major financial scandal in Dubai's financial hub. The Dubai Financial Services Authority, DFSA, has penalized OCS International Finance Limited with a fine of 2.64 million dirhams, about $720,000, for mismanaging a whopping $46 million in client funds. The company's CEO, Christian Thurner, is also feeling the heat with a personal fine of 682,631 dirhams, around $186,000, and has been banned from holding any executive positions in the Dubai International Financial Center. The next update is about a data breach at Florida Central Credit Union that's affecting thousands of customers. Between April 2nd and April 4th, 2024, the credit union experienced a cybersecurity incident where an unauthorized third party gained access to an employee's email account. On July 31st, 2024, Florida Central discovered that this compromised account contained sensitive personal information of certain individuals. The breach potentially exposed the personal data of over 35,000 people, including their full names and social security numbers. And there you have it, a whirlwind tour of last week's operational risk landscape. If you want to read more about the topics I have covered and review additional content on emerging operational risk topics, then please log into the Risk Spotlight portal if you are a subscriber or go to riskspotlight.com to sign up for a free trial. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, stay safe and keep those risks in check.